Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to use linear programming to determine our feasible region, determine the vertices that create that um, bound our feasible region, and determine the maximum value that is going to optimize our objective function. So the first thing we need to do is you see that we have three constraints. And we're going to want to graph each and every one of those constraints and to determine our feasible region. So we have an x and a y axis, y, x. All right, so now when graphing y is less than or equal to 5, I know that y, the, it's the, y, the y value is 5. So I go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make a nice big dot. Um, now that's going to be 5, so that's going to be a solid line going here. Now since that's less than 5, I know that's going to be, since all my variables left, that's less than 5. So that means that's going to be shaded down. And I like to shave, save my shading at the end. Um, I just like to use arrows. The next thing is I go over to x equals 4. So now I go on the x-axis. I go over 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be a nice vertical line. OK? And then this says x is less than 4. Again, the values that are less than 4 for on the x-axis is going to be going to the left. Then I need to graph y is greater than negative x. Now again, to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, that is going to be y is greater than negative 1 over 1x one plus 0. So the y-intercept is at 0. And now I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And then I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And it's really important for us to be able to determine where those points are going to intersect for us to obtain our um, ver vertices. And this is saying y is greater than negative x. So all the values that are greater than this boundary line are going to be facing up. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that our region, our feasible region, is going to be this nice little triangle here. And actually, I probably should have gone over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one. So that would have been at over one, up one, 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 yes. So that left, that point is negative one, two, three, four, five, four. So now we need to be able to write in all of the coordinate point, all these vertices where our lines intersect. Um, so here I have negative five, so negative five comma four. Here I have um, x equals 4, y equals 5. Over here I have x equals 4, or I'm sorry, x equals 4, y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 comma negative 4. And those are going to be only my vertices. You can see, well, why don't you use those points? Well, that's not where two, two constraints met. We're only going to be dealing with the, we're only going to deal with the values where our constraints meet. Now what we want to do is optimize our objective function. So we're going to plug in our x and y coordinates for each of our um, vertices and determine which value is going to give us our large, or which point is going to give us our largest value. So for the first one, I'll do negative 5 comma 4. And I have that's equal to p. So that's going to be, so p is equal to 5 times negative 5 minus 2 times so therefore, that gives me negative 25 minus 8, which equals uh, negative 32. So that's obviously not going to be our um, top number. Oh, it's, sorry, it's negative 33. Uh, so that's obviously not going to work. Now let's do it to the next one. Uh, next point is 4 comma 5. So in that case, I have p is equal to 5 times 4 minus 2 times 5. So that 5 times 4 is going to be 20. Minus 2 times 5 is 10, which equals 10. And then I have my last point is 4 comma negative 4. p equals 5 times negative 4 minus 2 times negative 4. So therefore, or 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Negative 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 20, oh, I'm sorry, positive 8. 20 plus 8 is going to equal 28. So therefore, that's going to give us our maximum value, this coordinate point 4 comma negative 4. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you optimize your objective function. Thanks.